If you've ever found yourself selecting the same thing over and over again in Adobe Illustrator, I have a tip for you that'll save you a ton of time, and that's saved selections. We're going to try it out on a technical sketch of a men's shirt, but it's going to work on any project you have in Illustrator. Let's take a look. And this is actually something that I purchased. Um, and as you know, when you get stock art, very often it's all on one layer and it's not very well organized. So here's some things that we're going to do to make things go a little bit faster. So here I have the shirt on one layer, and then I've added some swatches that I'm gonna be using and a background on separate layers. And I've selected the shirt here, um, but let me go ahead first and show you how, you know, this is in a lot of different parts here. So anytime I wanna change any of the surfaces, add fabrics, textures, that sort of thing, I have about 12 different pieces that I have to select here, and I wanna make this easier by saving some of those selections. So to save a selection, you can find it in the select menu here. Uh, under save selection. But what I'm gonna do instead is use this newer menu here that's on the layers panel because it's a little bit handier. So to begin with, I'm gonna make a selection that has the background of the shirt, the placket here. So I'm gonna hold down on the shift key and select that rectangle that is the placket. And then I need the background of the pocket. Now the pocket is all in a group. I already looked at that. So I'm gonna tap A on my keyboard to get the direct selection tool, hold shift, and then I can select that pocket as well. So now that I have those three things selected, I can come here to the save selection menu and uh, just choose save selection. And I'll call this shirt, placket, pocket, um, BG for background and click OK. Now to use that selection, let me deselect here. I'll come back to the menu and here it is down at the bottom of the list. So I'll select that. All of those objects are selected now and I'm going to use my eyedropper tool here to select uh, color and appearance, line weight, etc. from um, my swatches over here. So now let's make a selection for the remaining pieces. And the reason I'm doing these separately is the remaining pieces are things that I might treat with an angle um, when I get to working with fabrics here that have some patterns in them and they need those directions. So we're gonna go ahead and do another selection here. So let me tap V on my keyboard. And this time I'm going to select the sleeves. One, two, I'm holding shift. Uh, the collar here, let's zoom in. There's a couple pieces here that are the collar band. There we go, and this. I think we've got all of that. And now what I wanna do is go back to that menu, save selection, and this time I'm gonna call this collar sleeves, like that, um, BG. And click OK. Now I'll come back out here, deselect, and go back to the menu and get that selection and I will use my eyedropper tool and apply that blue. And I can see that I left out the cuffs. The cuffs are separate shapes. So now what we can do is update this selection. So to do that, first you want to grab the selection. So I'm going back to the menu in the layers panel and I'm going to choose collars, sleeves, background. And then while that selection is active, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and grab this collar, I'm sorry, that uh, cuff and that cuff, and then go back to the menu and we have this option here, update selection. So now that selection is gonna include the cuffs. Let me go back and get it. Collar sleeves, BG, same selection as before, but now with the cuffs. So I'll use my eyedropper tool to just color the whole thing. If you need to edit your selections, you can come over here to the menu and choose edit selection. And this gives you a list of the selections that you've already created. You can select one and decide to delete it or rename it, that sort of thing. All right, so I'm gonna cancel out of here. Now let's go ahead and apply some more color to this shirt. So I'm going to get my first selection here and I'm going to add a plaid and let's go and get the second selection here. And I can 
let's see, collar sleeves and background, and I can eyedropper that plaid as well. And so now I just need to work with um, some of the angles of these. But before I move on to that, I just wanna give you a note about using the eyedropper tool. So when you have, like I have here, just these little swatches off to the side, um, these have multiple layers of fills. They also have a one point stroke on them. And so when I'm using my eyedropper, I wanna transfer all of those appearance attributes to whatever I'm clicking on. And so you need to have your eyedropper set up for this. So I'm gonna double click on the eyedropper tool to open up the settings and just make sure that you have appearance checked on both sides. And that way you'll get all of those different attributes. Okay, I'm gonna cancel out of here cause that setting is correct. And I'm gonna move on to a different one here. Let's go and apply this ripstop um, nylon texture. I'll get the rest of the shirt here and get that ripstop nylon. And now let's talk about some things that we can do to change the angle in such a way that it makes it more adjustable. You can come back to it and adjust it. So to begin with, when I select one of these sleeves, we can see over here in the appearance panel, I have an olive fill and then I've applied a separate fill on top of it. And that fill that's on top here is the ripstop nylon. So let me click on this bigger area here. If I turn that fill off, you can see that is a little pattern fill that's sitting on top of that olive solid fill. Um, and then above that, I have the one point stroke. So for something like the sleeves, I wanna create this angle so that that pattern will be at an angle. And the way that I'm going to do this is select this fill here, the pattern fill in the appearance panel, and I'll just add a transform effect to it. So I'm gonna do this by going to the FX menu and then I'll choose distort and transform and then transform. And this opens up the transform panel. And the only thing I really need to do here is just make sure that I'm transforming only the pattern, not the whole object. So I'm gonna uncheck object, keep pattern checked, and then come here. And for this, I'll just use nine degree angle there. And that looks okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. So now this particular fill for this sleeve has a an angle on it. And so, it's got that transform effect applied. And so I can just use that to apply to the cuff here. So I'm selecting the cuff on this arm. I'm using my eyedropper tool and I'm gonna select that. So now they're both the same. And then I can come over here. Let's go and grab this sleeve here and it's cuff. And then I'll eyedropper the opposite sleeve. The angle is gonna be wrong, but at least it's applied that transform effect there. So it's easy enough for us to go in and change it. So with these two pieces selected, I'm gonna open up that transform effect by clicking on the link there. And then I'll just add a negative to that nine degrees, hit the tab key. Now we're seeing that that's looking good there. So I'll click okay. And the reason I like to use a transform effect for something like this is that, you know, if later on I decide I don't like the angle that it's at, it's very easy to just go in there and nudge it up and choose another angle. So I can do the same thing here. So currently I have this sleeve selected here. I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool this time to transfer this uh, fill to the collar. So the collar is also gonna need an angle. So I'm gonna hold down the option or alt key and this allows you to sort of use the eyedropper to deposit whatever appearance that you currently have selected. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add it here and add it there. That adds that transform effect to the collar and then I can come in and adjust the angle. So let's see what 30 is 39. I think that's pretty good. Click okay. I'll come over here and adjust this angle I think that was negative 39 and this is a positive 39 and then I'll click okay. All right. So this is how you can use save selections to work faster on a technical drawing like this. Now, one thing I wanna say is that these save selections will travel along with this document. They don't travel along with that shirt itself. So if I made a copy of the shirt those selections would not copy over. So I would use this maybe if you're setting up a template, that's a really good way to work. So if I you know, made a copy of this document 
and started to use it as a template, then I would have those save selections in there. So if you've got a diagram that you use a lot, set up those save selections before you start um, iterating on it, and that way you'll have them in your document. I'm Laura Coyle. If you need more support in Adobe Illustrator, my membership offers courses and live Q and A's. And if you'd like one-on-one -on -one help, I offer that too. It's all on my website at lauracoilcreative.com. And thanks for watching.